Hey guys. Like what testimonies do you have? I wanted to share a testimony. Ask that question and share a testimony. Just you know, have an open place to where we can all be overcomers. Have a place, yeah. Like let this YouTube channel be a place where we testify of God's greatness, of all that He is. Whatever the situation may be, whether you were healed, whether you were set free, whether you delivered, whether you know it was a calling God put on your life, whatever it is, just remembering those moments. And so, one of the testimonies that I wanted to share today is, or was when I was younger. Like obviously, I was an atheist growing up. What? What? Obviously, but <laughs> I was an atheist growing up, and it was due to the fact that I saw people all over the world that that would say they were something and they didn't live like it, and it was either it was godlike, god people, Christians. They would say they're a Christian and they just wouldn't live like it. Maybe not all over the world, but at least in my local community. And the kids that said they would say they were Christians at the church that my mom would make, me go, would make me go to or wherever we would go, I would compare their life at school compared to who they were saying they were at the church. And it was two different people. And that's a terrible thing to do because you're basing God on the people. But honestly, we are his reference. And if we're doing a bad job, then obviously it references him. And he doesn't want to look bad. He probably really doesn't care, but he doesn't really want to look bad, I'm sure. But <laughs> So, grew up an atheist. The story between me, God finding me, is crazy. But I've been, uh, I've been born again, filled with the Spirit, baptized in Jesus' name. And <clears throat> I went to a conference with a bunch of uh, we walked into, we went to this building, and I'd never seen anything like it. Like we, we didn't really go a lot of places as a kid. I mean, my parents took me out of town, you know, to Texas or something like that, some local states. But we didn't really go out of town. Like we didn't go stay places. We didn't necessarily have all the finances to do so. But we weren't poor, poor. Back when I was younger, we were really poor. But um, as my mom, as I got older, we actually had a little bit of money. But it wasn't like we were rich. Um, but I went to this place and there was like 30,000 young people there. And they had their hands raised, man. It was like a rock concert. Like there's no way to, 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 to describe it. It was just crazy loud. People were just screaming. I wouldn't say screaming. They were worshiping is what they were doing. I get to this place, and like I said, I never seen anything like it. And, and, and like I said, there was like thirty thousand young people there. It was it was crazy. And, and obviously, the number is absolutely irrelevant. As long as there's two or three, the number's irrelevant. It is. It's it's something to something to acknowledge, but it's it really means nothing. Uh, if two or three are gathered together in His name, He'll be in the midst of them. So if two, twenty thousand, thirty thousand. Hey. He's the same God yesterday and forever, and the same God to the two and the three that he is to the, to, to the 30, um, thousand. But anyways, I go, I go in this place, man, and I am, you know, I'm new, so I don't know what God has for me. So I go, and I'm worshiping, man. I just jump in with him, you know. I'm not ashamed of this God that changed my life and, and set me free from addiction. And I was a young kid, you know, but I still knew, and uh, he had saved me. You know, I was thankful. I was grateful for, to, to have a relationship with him. But I still had no idea what I was supposed to do for him, or what I was called to do. But number one is to love him. But at the time, I didn't know. And so I was like, God, we're sitting in this service, and this preacher's preaching. His name's Mark Johnston. You can look him up. He has a different church. Uh, I don't think he's a part of the organization anymore, but that's really irrelevant. Incredible preacher, man. He was preaching apostolic dude. He was chunking Mountain Dew all over the place. It was incredible. It was funny. I know it's church. You know, we call it church, but um, it was nuts. You know, it was a conference message. Uh, it was like 
taking all the Mountain Dews and like it's like Code Red Devil, you know, Mountain Dew Code Red, or Baja Blast, or I don't know what it was. It's just different, different Mountain Dews and <laughs> Live Wire, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, long story short, I'm sitting at, uh, I'm standing on the side of the platform, and there's like a, a platform that goes out toward the middle of the crowd, where people can gather all the way around, and then there's the main platform. And I'm standing on this left side on the furthest away from the stage. I'm the furthest away from the stage. Like, literally, there's the end of the stage. I'm standing there. There's not a lot of people around me. Um, but I'm standing there, and I'm worshiping, you know? But I'm also thinking to myself, God, what is it that you've called me to do? You know? Like, I want to know, you know? And so, this is a testimony. I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, if you want me to be a preacher of your gospel, if you want me to be a, a preacher, then let that preacher right now let him stop preaching. Let him lay his microphone down and let him come lay hands on me as a sign that you've called me to preach. Now, what we call in the church world, we call those, uh, oh gosh, it just slipped my mind. We call those 24 hours later. Fleece. It's a fleece for the Lord. Lord, show me just to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm not losing my mind. Let me be. If I'm called to be a preacher, let this guy come lay hands on me. So I am praying, and I, as soon as that leaves my mouth, I'm saying it audible, praying to God, you know, blah, blah, blah. And as soon as that leaves my tongue, the preacher sets their microphone down. Number one, I'm like, well, that's cool. He set his microphone down. Step back for a second. Second, you know, he's worshiping the Lord a little bit. He had made a great point. And he had stopped. He walked away from the pulpit, left the microphone there, walked all the way around the platform and he walked straight to me Did you see that did you see it did you see what wow we ah and he laid hands on me yeah blew my mind and i uh i he laid hands on me and i i had i just i was like i'll receive whatever it is you have for me god because i believe in impartation uh, as young, as, as new as I was, I knew about impartation, but I believed in it. And he laid hands on me. And I was like, I received this. And um, I fell to my knees when he let his, when he let go of me. I fell to my knees and I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, God, you heard me. And you, out of 30,000 young people, you, you listened to me, you know? Man, and just thinking about it right now, I'm getting super emotional. But uh, anyways, um, it's just a test, my testimony. And I was like, there's no shot. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking, God, there's no way that you just did that. Like, that, like, and I was thinking, I was trying to make up every excuse known to man that it, why that was coincidental. Like, I'm telling you, 30,000 young people, he bypasses everybody. He lays his microphone down and he comes to you. Like, he walked around so many people that he could have laid hands on. And, um... And I was like, God, maybe it's because I'm around these. There's there, there's girls there, and maybe because I'm the only guy over here. He wants to make sure I'm not being a weirdo. And he wants to lay hands on me for you know. I, mean, I was making up everything that I could. I mean, I was thinking of everything I could, and the place is like electrified by this time. And I'm like on my on my knees, and my hands in my face, just sobbing, and I'm doubting everything. And all of a sudden, someone leaned on. Someone leaned down to where I was put their hand on my shoulder and they said this is to confirm I'm talking about audible they said this is what this is to confirm what God just told you and I'm still a skeptic I'm new to this and so I want to know who just told me that and so I turned immediately as soon as they stopped talking I turned to look and I mean I looked all the way around and there's no one within reaching distance like not logical enough, not close enough logically to, to touch. And by the time I turned, just didn't make sense. So no one was there. And I was like, what? And I'm on my face. I just laid on my face. And thinking about that gets me super emotional because like God's gifts and his callings are without repentance. And I think I talked about that in the last video, but like when God calls you, no man can tell you you're not no matter the bad choices you make no matter the things that you've done like God when God calls you when God does something 
when God gives you a testimony, when God does it, it's God has the right. No man calls you, God calls you. That means no man can fire you. Only the Lord can fire you. And so I just think about that all the time. Because in the seasons that I've been in where I'm not sure which direction God's called me, I've had people prophesy and pray for me and tell me that God was going to use me to save millions of lives. And I'm telling you, I want it. I want to see God touch millions of people. Just let them feel his presence, you know? Let them know him. And, uh, man, I just wanted to talk about that, you know? If you have a testimony that, that God's been good or God's brought you out or God's kept you, like, write those things down. Don't you ever forget what God's done for you. And keep those things close to you. And don't you let anything talk you out of what he's done in your life. Don't let a single person tell you, well, that couldn't have been God. That couldn't have been, you know, that's all coincidence. Yeah, we can coincidence everything away. We can. We can make up excuses after excuse. But what if God loved you enough to give you that? What if God loved you enough to talk to you? to take and go around 30,000 or 29,999 young people and come straight to you. And that's just what he does every single day. He will. If you'll listen, he'll go around 7 billion people, however many people are on this earth, and he'll come turn his ears to you if you'll turn your, your mouth to him. You'll turn your affection to him because that's just who he is. And so I wanted to be an encouragement to somebody. Remember those testimonies and, uh, you know, set your affection to him. You know, let him know you love him and, and, and just thank him for those moments he was there. If it doesn't feel like he's there now, just thank him for the moments that he was and keep those on the forefront of your mind. That helps. It helps a ton. Um, you know, if you're not a believer and you don't really know what a testimony is, I can tell you you can have one just as fast as it is for, <laughs> to say a prayer. And that is to say, God, I need you. And I can promise you he turns his ear to you. If you don't know who God is, I'm telling you, you can, you can comment on this video and you can say, hey, I want to know who the Lord is. And then I'll reach out to you and we'll get somebody to pray with you and, and, and help disciple you and teach you about how good the Lord is. And uh, let him show you that he can give you testimonies and let him deliver you and keep you because he, he is that good. So, but anyways, I love you guys. Let's share this, okay? Let's get some testimonies going. Talk to you later.